When the great awakening comes, we're not only called to awaken the church, we're called to awaken nations. I will say that word is very accurate. You know, as we've been prophesying, and it's going, this actually ties into what I'm going to speak on, the manifestations of the prophet. And uh, uh, when, when God seasons prophets, we should get more accurate and our words should come up to a higher place. In fact, um, as I was looking back, some of the past prophecies the ACPE gave, we gave a word that the, that the um, EU would fragment that has happened. We gave a word when things looked very unstable for the U.S. economy that the dollar would still be the refuge currency to invest in, that's happened. We gave a word about some defunding of the UN, uh, you know, that was going on, that's being talked about right now. I'm not talking about complete defunding, targeted defunding. So these words have been very, very accurate that we gave. I mean, you could just look it down the line and see that they were very, very accurate. And I believe that this all ties into what I want to share with you tonight. And um, we know that Ephesians 4, 10 through 12, if you will turn there with me, it's very, very important to understand what a prophet does. Now, how many of you prophesy on a regular basis? Can I see your hands? Okay, quite a few of you prophesy on a regular basis. And this is very important because... Uh, the Bible commands us to earnestly desire to prophesy, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 and 31. So this is a very important gift to learn to prophesy. But what the Lord is showing me is God is elevating even people that prophesy to a new sharper level, and God is getting ready to do something new in our society. But first of all, Let's look foundationally, and most of you know this, but Ephesians 4, uh, verse 10 uh, to, through 12. And it says, He who ascended is also the one who is, in, um, who is uh, ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. How many things are going to be filled? All things. What's all things? Very interesting to do a biblical study of those two words, all things. All of society. All of the spheres of influence. He wants to fill all things, right? Okay, it's very important to understand that he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. All right? So we know that when Jesus went to heaven, he put... Part of his administration, his ministry gifts into each of these five full gifts for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. The word equipping here in the Greek is katatismos. It's the same word. It's like the set of bone, like a chiropractic adjustment. So part of the role of the prophet is to adjust the body of Christ, to challenge the body of Christ, to take us up to a higher place. Amen? You know... Many times I've met, with, met people and they're prophesying, but they're prophesying, you know, on this level and God wants to take them to a higher level. And sometimes we get stuck in the realm of personal prophecy. Personal prophecy is wonderful and it's good, but God wants you to prophesy even on a higher level to affect nations. Amen? You're looking at me like, I don't know. All right, well, stick with me. I'm going to prove it's in the B-I-B-L-E. Those of us with a Baptist background, we have great respect for the B-I-B-L-E. Okay. And then verse 13 says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to perfect man to be measured, the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. That is huge. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Does the Bible mean that? Well, you could say that's, you know, for the, you know, the, uh, you know, after Jesus returns. However, and I'm not going to tell you why I believe it is now and then. But there's some, there isn't a perfecting gift that God will give us. There's a sharper gift. And part of my role 
apostolically prophetically, because I kind of have a hyphenated gift mix. You know, we have a 50-state prayer network, and we built prayer networks all across Central Asia and all over the world. Uh, so part of what I am called to do is to find the thing the Holy Spirit wants to do to elevate us to a new place in our job description so we can come up higher. Amen? We need to come up higher. Do you know we can get stuck? We can get stuck in the old way of doing things. We can ourselves get personally stuck, but we can get stuck in many ways, and God doesn't want us to do, to do that. God wants to fill all things. And we could, put, we could pull and say, Matthew 6, 10, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the 90s, I started teaching on that, and I said, what does heaven look like? That's his will, to bring heaven to earth. Now, you might say, well, Cindy, you think everything's going to be perfect. I'm not saying that. There's sin still in the world. But what I'm saying is we're a long way from doing what we should be doing. Amen? And so what happens is we put a very low bar on what we can accomplish in our society and what we can do. And I'm here to stretch you tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, "Uh uh-oh, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. I am here to provoke you, and I am here to stretch you to a higher place in your gift, in your calling for the work of the ministry. The work of the prophet is not just for the church, it's for nations. Anybody ever read the Great Commission? Matthew 28, 17 through 20. What does it say? Go and make disciples of? Of what? Nations. And what are we supposed to do with those nations? Teach them. What are we to teach the nations? This book. You know, I've been involved in teaching and transforming. I see my good friend, Marcy McMillan. I don't know where Marcy went. Where are you, Marcy? Marcella? I don't know. She's here somewhere. There you are. You were supposed to stand up at the appropriate moment. Anyway, but she, she's been used of God and Kelly Columbia in a great way, and we're very good friends and seen some amazing transformations. I've seen amazing transformations around the world, but we haven't seen them still they transformed in many cases. So I began to ask the Lord, why not? And he said, you have to reform. You have what we want to call the mountains of society, the sector of society. You have to disciple those sectors of society in order for a nation to stay reformed. So you got to have revival, and then you've got to have reformers, and then you'll see transformation. Amen? So... We need to learn to use our gifts in a way that is targeted and focused so we can see revival, but raise up those revivalists to be reformers that will see the discipling of their nations. Amen? Amen? And prophets can be used very definitely to disciple nations. Amen? And so it's important to understand what is the work of the ministry. The Holy Spirit began to provoke me, and he began to say, Cindy, you are way down here on the prophetic scale, and I want you to be way up here. Begin to read what the prophets did in the Bible. So I began to read what the prophets did in the Bible, and I began to notice they did a lot of things I haven't done yet. So I began to make a list of a lot of things I hadn't done yet. One of the things that I have seen in a portion, but I've not seen to the fullness that I want, is to affect whole nations. Is it possible 
for God to use an individual to affect nations. Think of Tommy Hicks in the Argentine revival. He came in, he gave a word to the president, the president opened stadiums to him, and the president had a healing. But you understand this, that, that we, we want to get people evangelizing, we want to get a lot of people saved, but how about going back to that same president and say, now there are some laws in your nation that aren't pleasing to God. You're getting really quiet out there. Many times as I have prophesied during the administrations of presidents, so I have seen that they ask me things like, what treaty should I sign? What should be done with the nations? You see, I'm a prophet to nations. And when I get in front of a president, it's just like I get an x-ray readout of a nation. Why? I'm called to make disciples of nations. But so are you. So could God use you in some way to influence your neighborhood, your city, your state, and even greater? You know, Pennsylvania, don't forget you're the keystone state. You know what a keystone is? It's something that everything is built on, that if you remove that stone, everything falls apart, right? That's a keystone. If you build a fireplace, there will be one stone that is the critical stone. If you pull that out, everything else crumbles. So why do you think you're called the keystone state? Because you are. You're a key. And the Lord wants to use Pennsylvania in a great way not only for the healing in America, but the Lord shows me there's a reason that, you know, global awakening here, there's a reason that God has raised up this ministry out of Pennsylvania because God is going to give you those keys for revival, reformation, and transformation of nations. Amen? When the great awakening comes, we're not only called to awaken the church, we're called to awaken nations. Can I get an amen? Amen. Why? Because Matthew, the Great Commission 28 says, we're to make disciples of nations. And we've been discipling individuals. It's real quiet in here. And when the Lord showed me this revelation, oh, probably 17 years ago now, I got on my face and I was so embarrassed before God, I said, you mean when I get to heaven, you're going to say, did you, was the U.S. disciple the God of the Lord? Yes. You see, in the Great Commission, we have two parts. We have Mark 16, laying hands on the sick, but we also have Matthew 28. One, the supernatural is supposed to be a catapult for us to do the discipling of nations for influence. Of course, salvation is primary. We have to get people saved. But the Lord wants to open doors for us to see whole cities changed. And I'm just prophesying over you. And I'm telling you in this movement, the Lord is getting ready to move everything to an even greater level. You've done great things, but an even greater level. As prophets, it's possible to give a word that will get the attention of a nation And I'm not saying every single person is to do this, but don't limit what God can do through you. You understand this? Don't say, oh, that's not me. Well, por que no? Why not you? You know? I mean, you know, this is my motto. Might as well be me. Turn to your neighbor. Might as well be me. And look at everybody say, might as well be us. We are influencers, amen? And the Lord is telling me that God is raising up a generation of Tommy Hicks, like in the Argentine revival, and out of this global awakening, come on, Randy, take this, this is a great word. And out of this movement, God is gonna raise up those with the word of the Lord and the miracle anointing. But when you get there,
And now that you're going to see stadium saved, God says, go on to make disciples of those nations. Thank you.